Hello guys and welcome back to another video of Architects 3DP. In this fourth episode of the Build the Best DIY 3D Printer series, I'm going to continue with the build of the Y-axis by adding the electronics and making the cable management. And at the end of the video, you will end up having this nice result. Now I'm going to show you the components that we'll need for this part of the printer, but before starting, be sure to subscribe and to ring that bell to be notified when cool stuff is uploaded. If you do it, you will help me creating new content and growing the channel to reach more special viewers like you. Ok, back to the necessary components, we will need the Y-axis assembly we built last week and a bunch of new components that I will show you now. You will have the links in the description to download all the modified STL files, as well as the links to buy all the hardware through our affiliate links on Amazon. If you still don't have a 3D printer to print all the 3D printed parts yourself, you can contact me by email through my address architects3dp at gmail.com. First you'll need the GT2 belt either, that is the 623H bearing housing, with a 25mm M3 bolt, two M3W washers, and an M3 nylon nut that will hold it in place. We'll also need the NEMA 17 stepper motor with a GT216 pulley that will be held in place by two M3 10mm screws and we'll also include the 3D printed piece Y motor distance. Then we'll also need the 3D printed Y belt holder that will be subjected by two 12mm M3 screws and two M3 hex nuts. And finally we'll also need the Y GT2 belt that we are going to start installing in place. Notice that at the end of the video, as always, I'm gonna make a recap of all the components, so make sure to check it out and don't miss any part. The first step will be to flip our Y structure. Notice that I've put some paper underneath to prevent scratching my desk. Then we'll put the 3D printed Y belt holder in place, as you can see in the images, and we'll insert the two 12mm M3 screws to keep it in place. Notice what's the correct orientation for this piece. The open face should be pointing to the side with only one linear bearing. Once we screw them in place, we'll flip the piece and we'll insert the two M3 hex nuts to set everything in place. Finally, you'll have it completely tight in like this. And we will continue installing the Y-axis idler right here. So as I said before, we'll need the 623H bearing with a 25mm M3 screw, the M3 nylon nut and the two M3W washers. We'll start screwing the bolt, then we'll insert the first washer, the bearing and the second washer inside of the 3D printed piece. It can be very tricky, so keep calm and once you insert it, we'll finally add the M3 nylon and tighten everything a little bit. Don't put too much pressure since we need the bearing to be able to spin. Next, we just have to install the Y-axis NEMA 17 motor in place. And for that, we will pre-install in the holes the two 10mm M3 screws then we'll present the motor in place and after tightening it we'll put the Y motor distance 3D printed piece in place as you can see on screen. Once everything in place we'll tighten the screws and the next step will be to install the GT216 pulley. To adjust it properly you should flip the Y structure and adjust the pulley completely centered with the Y belt holder we installed before. Once centered we'll tighten the two little screws. Next step will be to check that the Y belt either is centered with the central 3D printed piece and to check it you can for example use the belt as I do. Once here we will just have to install the GT2 belt inside the three pieces we just installed. So first we will insert this end of the belt like this. You can use a pair of pliers to make it easy. Also check out the correct orientation of the belt. The geared side should be facing up like so. Then we will run it through the idler as well as the motor pulley. Finally taking it back to the central Y belt holder, where we'll insert it in place as we did with the other end. Notice that I've released one of the screws of the Y motor to release the tension. Once we have the motor free, we'll tighten the belt with our fingers and we'll insert it in the gaps as we did before. It's then when we'll insert back the screw we released before to hold the motor and bring it back to its original position, but we'll tighten the belt even more. Once done, we'll flip again the whole structure and we'll check that every component is moving properly. And yes! The next step will be to install the Y-axis end stop using two small M2 screws and nuts to hold it in position. The red button should be next to the motor and once installed, we'll test it if it's clicking properly by moving the heated bed. As you can see, the heated bed is clicking it perfectly. Once installed, we'll add the cables to the end stop. 
For that, I bought a pack of cables for 3D printers on Amazon, but has the connectors to attach them to the RAMS 1.4 that I will be using to control the machine. So I measured the distance of the cable I need to run from the end stop to the motherboard, and I cut it to length. To work better, I'm actually going to take the end stop out of the assembly. I will weld the cables to the pins using some tin and an electric welder. So first step will be to peel the cables using a blade or something. Then we'll hold it and we'll weld the cables in this exact same order. Once done, we'll use some heat shrink tubing to cover the unions making it safer and cleaner. Finally, I will add a thicker piece of heat shrink tubing to attach all the three cables together. After that, we'll screw it back in place as you can see here, and we'll continue with the wires of the NEMA 17 stepper motor. So we'll flip the whole assembly one more time, we'll connect the cable to the stepper motor, and then we'll attach them to the bottom of the threaded road like so, using a couple zip ties to keep it nice and organized. Once in place, just cut the waist of the zip ties and flip it back to its original position to have this nice result. At this point guys, we have finished the Y-axis electronics and cable management. The only part left for this Y-axis will be to install the heated bed in place and do all the cable management, but we'll do it in the next episode. Now as always I'm gonna make a recap for all the necessary components that we'll need for this build. First, for 3D printed parts, we'll need the Y motor distance component and the Y belt holder. For hardware, we'll also need a NEMA 17 stepper motor, a 623H bearing for the idler, a GT216 pulley, the GT2 belt, a mechanical end stop, a 25mm M3 screw, two 10mm M3 screws, two 12mm M3 screws, two M3 W washers, an M3 nylock nut, two M3 hex nuts, two 10mm M2 screws, two M2 nuts, and finally a bunch of zip ties. If you're going to buy the components for this episode, you should know that we will need 5 NEMA 17 stepper motors for the complete build of the printer. So it will be cheaper if you buy a pack of 5 on Amazon. Remember that you will have the links in the description to download all the modified STL files, as well as the links to buy all the hardware through our affiliate links on Amazon. If you still don't have a 3D printer to print all the 3D printed parts yourself, you can contact me by email through my address architects3dp at gmail.com. In the next episode we'll install the heated bed, so be sure to subscribe and to ring that bell to be notified when cool stuff is uploaded. Hit the like button if you liked the video, leave a comment and share this episode so more people will be able to learn with the project. Finally, I just wanted to give a special thanks to all of you, and especially to our Patreon supporters for continuing to make this channel possible. If you want to join them and support the channel as well, getting nice rewards and making me super happy, you can do it navigating to patreon.com slash architects 3 dp or clicking here in the top right corner. Okay guys, so as always, see you in the next video.